Hi guys and welcome to this WordPress website migration video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well today what I want to do is I've got a, a, a little online store WordPress website here that I want to migrate to an online server. Now the process that we're going to use today is the same if you want to transfer it from one hosting environment to another. Say you want it to, to move it from Bluehost to Go, GoDaddy or iPage to HostGator or something. The process is exactly the same. This one happens to be on my local machine here that I'm using for a test build. If you're interested in learning how to build them on a on your local machine, then have a look down below. I do a course on that. I'll drop the link down below. And you can check it out. But what we want to do essentially today is move this site to a live hosting environment. So WordPress is basically made up of two things. It's made up of all your files and it's made up of a database which tells your files how they got to display and takes care of all the logins and stuff like that. So essentially inside your folder, this is what the WordPress site looks like. Now, whether you're on your hosting environment or your local machine like this in your directory, this is what it's going to look like. So the first thing I need to do is I want all of these files. So I'm going to select them. I'm going to zip them up into a zip file. You can call it what you want. I'm going to leave mine as local WP just so you know what it is. It's moving along nice and quickly and as you can see it's already created the zip and we're good to go now and we'll need that one in a moment now that's the file part taken care of now we need the database as well and like I say mine's on my local machine so I'm going to go to localhost I'm using XAMPP and the same thing would be very similar on your online server if you're doing it from one online site to another. You need to go to your PHP My Admin, which is where I'm going to go now, which is where all your databases will be located, and select the database that you want. Local WP, that's the one I want right there. Now I'm going to go along, I'm going to go and export it. I want to export it as an SQL. And just hit the go button and as you can see it's downloaded it there for us okay so that's the backup bit taken care of now I'm going to go to my online provider where I want to actually put it I'm going to put it as a subdomain of one of my main sites here because it, it's not a pro, it's not a real website it's just a, a demo website that I built for a course so I'm going to go to my file manager. Now your file manager, if you if it's just for one domain, I'm going to go to the public HTML. Yours may not have anything in it at all. And you would put your zip file right here. But I need to create a directory for this. So I'm going to hit the add folder. And I'll call it local WP just to keep things simple. And let's have a look, it should be down here somewhere. LM, there it is, local WP. Like I say, your directory may look like this, empty. And the next step is to grab our little zip file that we created and put it, put it in this directory. So we've got the fault, the, all our website folders and files there. So I'm gonna hit the upload button. For anything with a C panel, it's going to look pretty much exactly the same as what I've got here. I know iPage is a little different. You have to do things slightly differently there. You can upload a zip file, but you have to go to a different page to unzip it, etc. So that was fairly quick. Let's go back and it should be there now. There it is. And what I need to do is extract it. 
I'm going to go down and hit extract. And there we are, it's extracted it. It doesn't look like there's anything there. All I'm going to do is hit the reload button and magically it'll all appear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of that zip file because we just don't need it anymore. And also, in fact, I've got a login text there, which I don't want to leave on my server. That was just for my own benefit for in case I forgot my password. So I'm going to delete those. I'm going to skip the trash and just get rid of them completely. So there we've got all of our files that we need for our WordPress site there. And it's pretty much a mirror image of those. Well, it is an exact mirror image of the file that we uh, zipped up just now. OK, for the next bit, now we need this database or database file that we created earlier. Or we didn't create earlier, we exported earlier from our website. So again, I'm going to go to my cPanel. And I'm going to go to my SQL database wizard. And again, it should be pretty much exactly the same if you've got a cPanel account. And I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to call it local WP. So it's going to be called system22 underscore local WP. Next step. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to call it same thing for a user. And let's create a password. Um, OK. And create the user. Now we've created the user. I'm going to go ahead and give it all the privilege, privileges. And there we are. We've, we've done it. We've added our database. So we've got the two parts that we had here for our database. Now what I need to do is go in and tweak a few things to actually make it work. So let's go back to our cPanel where we put our files just now. And I want to go down to our WordPress config. I'm going to right click and edit. If you want to, you can do this before you move the site. But it will break it in the place that you've moved it from if you do this. And if we go down, here we are on line 23. I've got to put a database name. Well, we use the same, but there was system 22 in front of it and underscore. So it's system 22 sort of prefix to it. And the user was the same. And the password, it wouldn't take that short one. So I had to just add a couple of exclamations on the end of it. And localhost, I'm going to leave that as exactly as it is there. Now, for I know for GoDaddy and this is webhost Python, it is localhost fine. Some of them you have to put in a different um, host name, and it'll tell you when when you created your your database what it's going to be basically. And I know this is localhost, so. We've changed those. Let's save our changes. Now we've got to make one more change. We've actually got to go into the database because we've moved it to a different address. So we've got to change a couple of things in the WordPress. So let's go back to cPanel. Let's go to PHP My Admin. And there it is. And let's import that database. Because we created it, but there's nothing in it at the moment. So let's import it. Choose the file. Okay, so I've gone to the folder and chosen the file. 
I'm just going to go ahead and hit go. So there we are, we've got it in there now. Let's just click on it so all the files appear here. And we want to go down to the options file here. Your prefix may be slightly different. Uh, by default, WordPress puts WP there. And when you create your site, it's usually a good idea to just change it from WP to something else. Doesn't matter what it is. And that's obviously, I've changed it to uh, LW. Well, probably local WP. But anyway, go down to wherever it says options. Click on it. And over here, you can see that's our old address. That's where it used to live at uh, localhost WP. And want to hit the edit button and put in our new address. Now, my new address is it's my regular website address, but not that. It's local the name of the folder that we created, local WP. I'm pretty sure, let's just check that. My memory is not particularly good. There it is, local WP, so that's right. So I'm gonna copy that. So it's my main site and a subdirectory called local WP. I'm gonna copy that. And I want to save this, obviously. And I want to do the same thing for the next line, which is its home. Unless you have it in two different places, but I don't. So I'm going to hit go. OK, that should be good now. So here's my regular site. If I just drag it over over here and it was local WP. So let's put forward slash local WP and see what happens. There it is. There's our WordPress site at our new location, which is online here. Just to make sure everything's working. Seems to be fine. If you get an error of something like uh, failed to connect a, connect a database, have a look at your database, make sure you've got the right password and everything in there. The only other problems I've come across occasionally with this is if you go to a sub page, it'll give you a 404 not found, even though the URL's correct. And you can usually fix that by just going down to, let's see if I can log in, I'll show you. Let's go to WordPress admin. And it'll be the same credentials to log in as whatever it was you used before. And that's not it. I haven't got a clue what it is actually. That's why I had my little login folder over here. Oh, okay. Users easy enough. Same as we used before. Yeah, it's a big old long password. Yeah. There we go. And like I say, occasionally you'll get when you've done this, you'll go to one of your sub pages and you'll get a, a 404 error saying it can't find the page. And the real easy fix is go down to settings and it's your permalinks down to the permalinks here. All you have to do is just change to another one, put it back where it was, hit save. Sometimes you don't even have to hit save, just change it like that. And once you go back, it'll fix that issue. That's about the only problem I have with this method. Um, one other thing that occasionally will happen is images will not display correctly. 
and it's because they're pointing to the old URL. A uh, bit of troubleshooting for that is there's a fantastic plugin called it's called Go Live, I think it is. Let's go back to the dashboard and go to plugins. I'm not going to bother updating because I'm going to delete this site as soon as we're finished with this video. And add new, unless I've got it on here already. No, I haven't. And if your images aren't displaying correctly, you can go to go live. I think it's go live. There it is. And it's a very quick install. And then it should come under. Oh, better activate it first. And it should appear under tools. Or there it is, tools. Go live. And what you want to do is go down and put the old URL in, which ours was localhost, and then your new URL that you want to change it into here. So the, the old one would be HTTP localhost where it was before local WP and the new one is going to be um, system 22 local WP without that on the end. Don't have the forward slash on the end. Just have the first bit with your old address HTTP localhost local WP or whatever it was and put your new one down underneath update it and that usually fixes that problem for you. But like I say, this one went smooth, smooth, so we haven't got that problem. Like I say, if you want to learn how to build these things on your local machine, have a look down below. We do that course down there. So anyway, I hope that's been useful to you. If it has, please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're interested in web design, like I said before, we've got some great courses down below. There's some fantastic free courses as well as some premium courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube sub subscribers. So do take a look. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.